Catchapedia. Ooh, I that like that nice. one. Nice. Okay, Maybe one more time. Too. All right, let's try it again. Okay. Ketchupedia Words for Writers podcast and Ketchupedia Poetry Radio is a program by Flying Ketchup Press in Kansas City, Missouri to develop new and diverse voices. Our dream is to salvage lost treasure troves of written and illustrated work to create worlds of wonder and delight to share your story. Find us at www.flyingketchuppress.com. everyone. My name is Hope Hatwood. I'm here with Polly McCann. And we're here for today's Word Power episode. Yes. I wonder what word we're going to do today. Well, I'll tell you. Okay. We're going to talk about pacing. Pacing. Yes. Okay. Well, that sounds unusual. There's a lot to pacing. Okay. So <laughs> um, pacing is what? I should have I read the definition there. <laughs> okay. So pacing is the stride, measure, speed of maintaining the same rate of progress in the cause and effect sequences of a novel. It's also described as the sequenced order or scenes and their progression towards the conclusion. I don't understand any of that. I didn't either. Progression, the progression toward the conclusion, it's the pace at which you get to the end of the story. Yeah. The feeling that you have of yeah. how, it's how all fast the, the story's moving along. Yeah, yeah. And pacing varies, like, based on different types of genres, obviously, and the, whatever the plot is like. There's a famous movie that used to be really famous called Citizen Kane. I, I heard of that through Seinfeld. Yeah, we had a copy of it for some reason. And so one day I was like, okay, this is one of the famous movies ever made. I'm going to watch it. Mm-hmm. I put it on. And no joke, the pacing is terrible. I couldn't follow it. It was horrible. I wanted to die. I think I might have fallen asleep or gone to another Twilight Zone, when I wake up at the end, he finally says, Rosebud, which is the name of his lost wagon that he loved. He loved a wagon? That's all I remember, a wagon, and he says, Rosebud, like an so, old, about an old mean man. So was the pacing too fast or too slow or like a mix of both? It was so slow that <laughs> that I went to another reality. <laughs> I lost my mind. I have lost time. <laughs> so there, a lot of old movies are like that. Yeah. There's another famous one called um, Babette's Feast. Mm-hmm. And one of my artsy, most wonderful friends was like, this is a famous movie, one of the most famous movies ever made, and we're going to watch it because we have an artist group and we have a book club, and so we need to watch this. So it was also similar. Mm-hmm. Not as bad, but I don't remember any of the whole thing except there's it's black and white, and there's a chef who doesn't have any food to cook with, and then she cooks a feast, and then it's over. All right. Yeah. So why do you think why do you think older things are paced so slow? Oh, well, I have noticed that depending on which decade something is from, it goes faster. It goes faster the more you come to the present. But why do you think that is? Because we don't need as much information as we used to because we've seen so many more things. That's a good point. I I didn't think of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in the, it's I also notice it in writing. Mm-hmm. I'll have to remind my writers when I'm editing that they need to trust their readers more, and they don't need to tell us as much as they used to. You know what? You know what? This goes. This is in lieu of the, or along the lines of um, when we did goes without saying. GWS goes without saying. There's a lot that we already know because we've read so much and seen so much. Yeah, like if you're gonna tell us that, I mean, if you're gonna tell us about a dog, most of us have seen one, so maybe you don't have to describe. <laughs> you know that it has four legs and its yeah. tail wags and yeah. Its tongue is long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you, we need some description. Yeah. So and, anyways. Yeah. But pacing isn't just description. What else is it about? I mean, I would I would argue or just say that pacing comes down to even sentence by sentence. I was going to argue the opposite. What, really? Yeah, that pacing is about scene by scene. That the sentences, it's a bigger scale level. Goes without saying is one sentence. But pacing would be a whole scene that maybe you don't even need that scene. Yeah. I mean, it's probably all of them all together. Like, your pacing has to have the right flow throughout the whole story. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, if let's say you have a paragraph and there's an extra paragraph in there that just, like, adds too much that we already know, then it slows down the pace. But it also has to... No, no. I'm arguing this because... <laughs> What's your argument? My argument is that it goes down to the sentence because pacing is determined by 
as far as I know, it, it's determined by how your sentence is structured. So if you have these short, choppier sentences, that makes the pace like fly. And yeah. that's why you use short, choppier sentences and like okay. action se- sequences. But then if it's like longer, you would probably be like, you know, out in the countryside with your love or something like that. And you want to describe things and kind of put the reader in like this dreamlike state. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to concede there. Shorter sentences make the pacing feel faster. Yeah. It's good for action scenes. But also, the pacing has to do with the dialogue. So yeah. if there is too much monologuing, yeah. the character is talking to themselves, mm-hmm. thinking to themselves about something that happened yesterday, a conversation they overheard. They're taking us out of the action, and we are staring at a person whose mouth is slightly open while they think to themselves. <laughs> Yeah. So if you're a writer that doesn't normally visualize, I'm really good at helping those kind of writers because I'll say, yeah, you left your, you know, like when you play a video game and you walk away and the character's just like sitting there kind of like a robot, just kind of bouncing. Yeah. Waiting for you to come back. Yeah. They do that. Yeah. And so if you're not a visual thinker, you need an editor to help you find those spots. But the monologuing and how, how do you get rid of the monologuing? I would just strip it down to like bare necessity and like, Thinking about which parts of the monologue are um, connecting the reader to the character. Connecting the reader to the character. Because if, let's say, let's say there's a monologue, I'm making a sandwich (laughs) and it has um, turkey and tomato or something. Mm -hmm. And then the next line would be like, I prefer turkey and tomato because my grandmother made that when I was growing up and a child and blah, blah, blah. Yes. Thinking to yourself, association. The character's thinking associated thoughts yeah. to what they're doing. If that thought is not rooted in any action, it's even worse. Well, yeah, exactly. But thankfully, your character is actually making a sandwich and thinking about a time when she used to make sandwiches with her grandmother. Yeah, but she doesn't need to, like, the character doesn't need to think, like, oh, I'm making a sandwich and I'm going to put this on it and this <laughs> on it and maybe I'll add some mustard. It just needs to be, like, like... Sally made like, a sandwich for herself. I like the character singing like, I want a sandwich with turkey and tomato because of my grandmother in the when I was growing up. It doesn't need to be even like better if someone step. else comes in the room and she tells that person about it. Yeah. And they say, That's, Hey, why don't why do you put so much mustard on your sandwich? And then they <laughs> answer back because one time my grandma asked me to make a sandwich and I put too much mustard on it. So now I always do it because it makes me think of her. Oh. Oh. I mean I literally do that. I really do. You put too much mustard on yeah, it? Yeah, on purpose. Because I remember the time I made a ham sandwich for my grandma and I was like, Oh, she loves mustard and I just poured it on because I was like six <laughs> years old. And I bring it to her and she's like choking on it. She's like, <laughs> Thank you, Polly. <laughs> You're such a sweet girl. <laughs> okay, so that is much funnier than just sitting by yourself thinking about things. Yeah. It'll speed up the pacing. Yeah. Because it allows the reader to interact. Now the reader can judge for themselves what kind of person is your character because how did she speak to that other person? Yeah. What kind of person is that other character because how did they respond? Mm-hmm. And now the characters get, the reader gets to be involved by having their own opinions about what's happening. And if you just, you know monologuing what can they do there's I would no say outside way to get an opinion then it's not like it's not horrible to have like a long stretch of um not like long but like a decent stretch of monologue or a decent stretch of like narration because you can also get a lot of information that way it just has to be like it has to fit in the scene so if yeah if two characters are like slinging swords i feel like i always resort to this, kind of, this <laughs> i don't remember the slor- sword swinging from last time i feel like i say it every time this is okay, like what? this is my basic action scene okay what happened two characters are like slinging their swords yeah then one character is not going to go into an internal monologue about how they used to sling swords with like their sister or something or their brother <laughs> no they don't have time no and so that's like the mm-hmm. the wrong time but if a character is just waking up and has to face a new day or a new problem, and they're just kind of, like, there in the moment. Okay. That's, and that's how you get a lot of information, but not too much, because you don't want to... So the slow pacing occurs, and it feels uncomfortable to the reader, and they may put the book or the story down. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've stopped plenty of stories, because <laughs> the pacing is horrible. And so one way to fix that is the writer is to think about, well, this is all the information I need to deliver. I need to deliver this backstory. I need to deliver information about my character. 
I need to deliver information about my plot. Mm -hmm. I need to deliver information about how this thing is changing, this emotion or this setting. Mm -hmm. All that has to go in there, but it doesn't have to go all at once. Mm -hmm. And it should be divided up into scenes. Yeah. And each scene should reveal those things, in a, and you just have to find the best way to reveal them. Are you going to reveal them in dialogue? Are you going to reveal them through action? Basically, those are your two choices. If you don't use real, reveal them through one of those ways, <laughs> pacing problem. Actually, my favorite way to reveal, if I'm going to reveal a new character or a new, well, I'll just say thing, a new noun, my favorite thing to do is because I love um, um, flashbacks because that really helps you connect with a character and helps build like a, you know, a basis of their personality. Yes. Um, I like to have, um, I'll just give this example. Um, I had my character have a flashback of um, eating lasagna and um, it was like their favorite meal um, <laughs> when they were growing up, but they, they rarely got to have it. So when they had it, it was a really special time for them. Um, and then in the next scene, it brings you back to the present. And um, immediately, she like the main character is asking, like, oh, she said, I've never had this type of lasagna before. Hmm. So like you don't, I, I'm not sitting there telling you that, oh, you know, they're cooking dinner because she's visiting like a family, like the family's cooking dinner and they pull out the, the meat and then they pull out the noodles and they cook the noodles. No, I have like, <laughs> I have like a flashback describing her favorite time eating this lasagna. And then I put you back in the present okay. by saying, how did you, where did you get this recipe from? So would you call that a micro scene or a flashback? I don't know. I, I just call it a flashback because it happens. It happens Is there in the dialogue past. in it? Yeah. I think if there's dialogue in the flashback, it's a micro scene. Really? At least that's my, un you know, unidentified opinion. I know what, what, what word we're doing next then. We're doing micro scene. <sighs> well, and then, so I would say the pacing issue happens a lot when people stick to real time. Mm -hmm. They have their character go to the bathroom. Their character stomach hurts. Their character's sleepy. Mm -hmm. Their character's playing solitaire and is bored at work. Their character is um, walking to the next room. They're waiting for their lunch break. And it goes on and on. And the whole thing that's great about reading for readers is that we do not have to do any of it in real time. Yeah. So please take out those boring times, the waiting times, the sleeping times. You know, we don't need the character to toss and turn all night mm -hmm. for hours and pages. Yeah. I mean, unless you're doing some sort of great, yeah, amazing new thing with literature that I would love to read. You can try it, but... I was just thinking, um, I saw, like, a post um, a few weeks ago, and it was um, it was a, another writer that I follow, and um, she said, why do you never... Um, I'm so frustrated because I never hear about characters using the bathroom. <laughs> People do talk about that. And I think that's so funny because I realize I haven't either. When do you ever hear about a character using the bathroom? And sometimes I feel like I've never read it. And it's just like, okay, now here's a book I want you to read. What? Now I read this series a while back. It's called um, the wake series by Lisa McMahon. Mm -hmm. Now, some people in their reviews on Goodreads said that this book was odd because it was so short. Like it was a short book and this, the chapters are short. The writing is short. There's so much white space on the page. It's eerie. Like you're like how, but, um, I loved it and it had the fastest pace and I could, I just kept marveling like how few words she used and how she could do so much with so little. So if you want to look at amazing fast paced series, mm -hmm. I definitely recommend it. I loved this. So it's like, all about dreams. They call it a teen horror book here, but it's dreams and nightmares. So it's got it's a fantasy. lot of action. Yeah. A lot of action. Um, but, of course, I love books about dreams. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never read any book that had less words than that, that did so much. Wow. See, that's like a skill. And I am I am the kind of reader that loves long, slow scenes and descriptions. But I also like the freedom of books that I can skip things if I want. Mm -hmm. And I just enjoy that. And I go back if I need to. 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel like reading long scenes and sometimes I don't. But I think with good writing, your reader has the choice. Um, hopefully you don't press too many of them on them, too many to them. But they ha- they can read how they want. They can skim some of the long stuff or you don't have to keep it 100% brief all the time. That mm-hmm. could be tiring to some people. I just thought of a tip, and this is what helps me, but this is what could help writers. So when I'm going along and reading a book, you're given facts as you read about the story, right? And with every single fact that I get, I kind of file it away, and I'm like, I'm going to see if this is useful later on. Yes, readers do that. So, yeah, because it's I, I've gotten to the point now where, like, I've, I've missed so much. Like, I get to the end of the story, I'm like, whoa, I never saw that coming. <laughs> and that's, like, really awesome. That's really good writing. But I want to I wanna try to solve it first myself. Yeah. So with every, if they say the bed is placed over there or the dresser is over here, I kind of build that. And I'm like, okay, these are what I know about the room. But then if the whole story takes place in the kitchen, like, that's just frustrating. So that's how you can, oh. that's how you can trim away your pacing. You can say that oh. there's, you can say that there's a back bedroom. But you don't need to describe where the bed and the dresser are at. If the Unless story... it's relevant to the plot exactly. or developing the character. Exactly. Because if I know where the bed and the dresser is, I'm waiting for the bed and the dresser to get used or to somehow like explode or something. And there's one more thing about pacing that people need to know. Because that is very clear. And that is that if they worry about pacing as they're writing their drafts... Uh, it could inhibit them and they will get stuck because they're spending so much time trying to be perfect and concise and not say anything they don't need to say. No, pacing happens for the writer in revision. You go back and fix the pacing, but you have to let yourself be free to write whatever pace you want, and whatever you can describe that dresser for hours if you want. Yeah. And later you might have to take it out and mm-hmm. maybe you'll save it. I know people that save all that stuff. They actually save all their trimmings from all their writing. Oh, wow. Like, it's like people who sew quilts keep their scraps. Mm -hmm. So you could save it for later. Maybe that dresser was important to you and it's going to come up in another book. Yeah. Another story or a poem. I've written a poem about a dresser. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know. Um, So don't worry. You may be that... It's coming out of your imagination for a reason and it's important. Don't think that what you write isn't important. Just remember that you're cutting and crafting and piecing together something great for your reader in the end. Mm-hmm. So you have to honor your experience, but then make the pacing for your reader later. Yeah. I think they're going to do great. They're going to love this. Everyone will be so good at pacing. <laughs> Ketchupedia is brought to you by Flying Ketchup Press. What began as a collection of words for writers is now a springboard for classes, podcasts, and radio, one word at a time. Ketchupedia's name, logo, jingle, and concept were created with help from students from Kansas City Art Institute and Greenville University's Experience First Capstone class, and inspired by our friends at Steele's Used Books. Join us every week on Sundays at 6 o'clock Central on One Kansas City Radio, KONN 100.1 FM, or wherever you get your podcasts.